Hi everyone, welcome back to another video in the Web Security Academy series. In today's video, we'll be covering lab number four in the CSRF module titled CSRF where token is not tied to user session. All right, let's get started. This lab's email change functionality is vulnerable to CSRF. So we've got a vulnerable parameter over here is the email change functionality similar to the previous lab. It uses tokens to try to prevent CSRF attacks, but they aren't integrated into the site session handling system. Okay, so it does have some kind of defense against CSRF. However, it's implemented incorrectly and therefore still vulnerable. To solve the lab, use your exploit server to host an HTML page that uses a CSRF attack to change the viewer's email address. So the goal of this exercise is to exploit the CSRF vulnerability to change the email address of the viewer or the user that we're attacking. You have two accounts on the application that you can use to help design your attack. The credentials are as follows. So the first credentials over here are similar to the previous lab. So we have them written and then we've got the second credentials. So Carlos and Montoya, if I'm saying that correctly. All right, so let's access the lab. And while that opens up, we'll open up Burp Suite Professional. So for the first part of the video, we'll solve the exercise using uh, Burp Suite Professional. In the second part of the video, we'll only use the community edition and script the exploit on our own. So stick around if you don't have the professional version of Burp. So let's close this, hit next, and then start Burp. Okay, let's go back to our browser. The first thing we're going to do is log into the application using the credentials that we were given. So we're going to assume that this is the user we want to fish or attack. Hit login. And here's the email change functionality that we've been dealing with in the previous labs. Now let's set our browser to send requests to burp and change the email to test.test.ca and hit update email. And here we go. So it intercepted the request in proxy. I'm going to send this to repeater and then send another one to repeater because we're going to use it multiple times. So turn intercept to off and we're going to be working from repeater from now on. on. All right, so in the previous labs, we talked about three conditions that have to be satisfied in order for a CSRF attack to be successful. The first one is you have to have a relevant action. In this case, it's the same action as previous labs. So it's a change email functionality. And the reason it's relevant is because if the attacker has control of changing this email address, it would have detrimental effects on the client. So in this scenario, as an attacker, if I'm able to fish you and get you to change your email address to one that I own, then I could use that email address that I control in order to change the password of your account and fully compromise your account. So this is definitely a relevant action. So this checks off. The next one is you have to have purely cookie based session handling, which is true for this case as well. Session management is handled using one cookie called session, and this is the value of the cookie. And the third condition is no unpredictable request parameters because this is a pre-made request that the user would have to click on. We have to know all the parameters that make the request successful. So in this case, we know the email parameter. It's one that we want to change to our own email. The second request parameter though is unpredictable. So you've got over here a random token and the attacker has no way of figuring out what that token is going to be beforehand. So at first glance, this seems to be not satisfied, which makes the CSRF attack not possible. However, depending on the implementation of how uh, CSRF tokens are generated or how they're implemented and integrated in the application, it might still be vulnerable. So let's perform some test cases. In the past two labs, we started talking about our methodology of testing CSRF defenses. The first one is remove the CSRF token and see if the application accepts the request without the CSRF token. So let's remove that and see if the application accepts the request. And it doesn't. So it says missing parameter CSRF. So let's go back. The next thing to test is see if we can change the request method from post to get. So we're going to do that. To do that, right click, change request method, and it changed it to get. Let's hit send. 
and it says not found. So it doesn't allow us to change the request method from post to get. If it did allow us, the next thing we would do is um, check if the get method requires a CSRF token, because most applications don't use CSRF tokens for get methods and only use them for post methods. All right, so that looks good as well. There's one more thing I want to check, and let's try and go back to our CSRF token, and it doesn't let us, and that's why I sent a couple of requests to repeater. And I'm going to send this one again, just in case, and work with the second one. So the next thing I'm going to check is see if it actually requires a valid token. So I'm going to change this to J and see if it accepts it and it doesn't. So it says it's an invalid CSRF token. So this token value is definitely checked in the backend. All right. So the third thing to check is see if CSRF token is tied to user session. So a correct implementation of a CSRF token requires that this CSRF token over here be tied to this session over here. This is how it can tell that this CSRF token was generated for this user account. And so to test this, we do need another account on the application. And in a real world scenario, the way you would get that account is either is if you're already a member of the application or if the application has a sign up functionality. In this case, we're already given an account in the application. So we're going to assume this is the attacker's account and this is the victim's account. So to log into this, we're going to go back to Firefox and open a private session. So I'm going to have to re-log in. So I'm going to log in, access the exercise. So I'll do that and we'll come back to the video. And we're back. So again, I'm in incognito mode and I've logged into Carlos's account. So what we need to do over here is right click, inspect element, and obtain the CSRF token over here. So I'm going to copy that and check if it works with the victim user's account. If it does, that means the CSRF token is not tied to the session ID of the account. So let's paste this and hit send. And here we go. So if we follow redirection, you could see that the email address was changed to test at test.ca. So this is satisfied. The third condition, which we weren't sure is satisfied, is satisfied because CSRF token is not tied to user session. All right, so this is vulnerable to CSRF. Now the next thing to do is get a working exploit. And again, with Burp Suite Professional, there's a really easy way of doing that. You just right click, click on engagement tools, and then generate CSRF POC. And it generates the HTML document for you. The first thing we want to do is click on options and then select include auto submit script and then click regenerate and you could see over here it created the html document so you've got the form element which changes the email address it's a post method it has two input values one is the email which should be the email address of our attacker so let's say test2 at test.ca and the second one is the csrf token so we need to get the csrf token of our attacker and put it in here. So let's go to our attacker's account, which is Carlos. Let's reload it again because I can't tell if CSRF tokens are generated each time. So they are. So it changes with, with every request. So let's copy this, put it in here and paste it. And then we've got the submit button and this auto submits the script. All right. So let's copy HTML and test it on our victim user's account. So we go back to our original Firefox session. We go to exploit server and we put our script in the body. So what the exploit server is doing is it's hosting our script. The first thing we're going to do is store the exploit and then we're going to deliver the exploit to the victim user. And here we go. It says, congratulations, you solved the lab. If you want to see if the email address was changed, click on view exploit. It should automatically submit. And it says invalid CSRF token over here. And the reason it does that is because it already submitted it. 
and the CSRF token is no longer valid anymore because it's only used one time and it's already been used. But if we go back to the application, we should see that it changed too. And it did not because it's doing it on another session. So that's fine. What we're going to do is redo this. And we need a new CSRF token for this because, again, it's changed every time. So let's copy our new token, put it in here, paste it, say copy HTML. And if we could go back to our exploit server, oh, we're in the wrong one. So let's go back to our exploit server and it's not letting us. Okay, so because the exploit server is no longer there, since we've completed the exercise, what we're gonna do is test it in the browser. So click copy and put it in here. What that does is instead of it being hosted using the exploit server, it's now hosted on Burp Suite. So you could see that over here. So hit enter, it should automatically submit. And here we go. You see that the email address changed to test2 at test.ca. So we've definitely completed the exercise using Burp Suite Professional. If you would like to see a detailed version of the video where we both exploit the vulnerability using Burp Suite Pro and manually using the Community Edition, check out the video linked on the screen. Also make sure to hit the share and subscribe button so that the video reaches a wider audience. Thank you and see you in the next video.